Welcome. On behalf of Karivaska Research on Life, we have today a huge honor of uh, hosting Professor Peter Levy, uh, one of the, I would say, leaders of uh, cardiovascular medicine for many years now, uh, and uh, uh, appointed very recently president-elect of uh, International Atherosclerosis Society. Uh, I think all the honors and uh, positions are well, very well known uh, uh, of you, Peter, so I don't need to uh, uh, introduce that, but we are very honored and happy to have you here with us. Today. It's great to be here. Thank you. Many people are always wondering uh, when they look at persons so, such successful as you, uh, uh, whether it's ambition on, or talent. What do you need? What is a recipe for success in science? Well, there, there's no recipe for success, but I think that uh, there are some necessary but not sufficient, the sine qua non, uh, and that would be hard work and persistence. I think you need to have an appetite in research uh, for delayed gratification. And for many doctors uh, who are used to immediate positive feedback, that can be very, very difficult. I think you need good luck. You need to be at the right time, at the right place. Uh, you need to choose a good problem. Uh, but one of the things that's worked for me is never following the pack. You know, uh, I'm a bit of a, of a contrarian. I grew up in the turbulent 1960s. I was a student radical on the barricades in Berkeley, California in the 1960s. And they've never been able to wash all of the rebel out of me. So I think that that is one of the ingredients of the recipe that worked for me. So in a way, it's being brave. Uh, or foolish. <laughs> <laughs> so what drives you on in your uh, uh, constant uh, fight for novel discoveries? Well, I think my uh, lifelong scientific and medical mentor, Dr. Eugene Bromwald, puts it, the thrill of the chase. It's the hunt. Uh, it's uh, being able to discover something. Now, there's obviously um, two other aspects other than just getting the adrenaline of being able to discover things. Uh, one is personal ambition. If you don't have some ego, you won't survive <laughs> this uh, the difficulties of the, the road. And the other is, of course, to, to learn something for us as medical researchers. It's of utility to help our patients and improve public health. So th those are the drivers. And if you were to define among many successes that you've had, the greatest achievement uh, uh, and greatest contribution of all of your contributions uh, in, in cardiovascular medicine in general. Well, you know, as Isaac Newton said, uh, we stand on the shoulders uh, of our forebears in order to see far. And, um, you know, you talk about inflammation in cardiovascular disease. This is not a new idea. Uh, Virchow, in the middle of the 19th century, clearly enunciated the role of inflammation with much less knowledge of the details or pathways than we have. But I, I would say that one of the most satisfying parts of my career has been uh, to start out uh, ferreting out the roles of inflammation in cardiovascular disease in general, but in atherosclerosis in particular, and being able to follow it from the very earliest uh, preclinical stages with uh, gels and blots and, and columns uh, through pilot clinical studies and through to a large-scale clinical trial that actually showed that it's all worthwhile. Uh, so I would say that inflammation in cardiovascular disease and having played a small role in trying to uh, really elucidate those pathways is something that I would and take I, pride in. I, I agree that this is probably uh, also almost a perfect uh, story of translation in, uh, in science, something that the journals uh, such as ours is really striving in, for. In science, there, there's no perfection. There are no perfect stories because the road is rocky. There are ups and downs. Uh, every clinical trial that I've ever been involved with had near-death experiences. So I think the young people starting out need to be prepared uh, for failure because the path to success is paved with frustration and disappointment. And that's why I say you need to persevere in order to cross the finish line. Returning to inflammation and cardiovascular disease, uh, what do we need? I mean, Cantos trial has beautifully shown uh, potential uh, in therapeutics, uh, but uh, there is still a lot of discussion among cardiologists saying, well, immunosuppression, is it really the, the best way? Is it acceptable way? Uh, how would you respond to that? And where do you think is the way for uh, immune targeting uh, in cardiovascular disease? 
Well, you know, we've had a lot of disappointments. Uh, despite preclinical data, despite even pilot clinical studies, a number of potential targets related to inflammation and oxidative stress have not panned out. Uh, for example, targeting the phospholipases didn't work out clinically. Targeting MAP uh, uh, P38 kinase uh, didn't work out clinically. Uh, antioxidant strategies with a variety of antioxidant vitamins and then with the uh, lipophilic antioxidant drug, succinobucol, which is remarkably effective, in preventing oxidation of LDL didn't uh, improve cardiovascular outcomes in a large trial. Uh, so we have to be very modest uh, about uh, our successes, but the, the trial that you allude to, uh, the canakinumab anti-inflammatory thrombosis outcomes trial, CANTOS, uh, did show that targeting a specific pro-inflammatory cytokine could uh, improve cardiovascular outcomes. And that was important for me personally because I hypothesized a role for interleukin-1 in atherosclerosis in print in 1986. So it took us uh, some three decades to go from the first test tube experiments to the large-scale clinical trial. And from your experience in the light of uh, public, can basic science and its discoveries compete with uh, clinical uh, uh, research and clinical science for attention of uh, yeah. patients? So, you know, we scientists are bad communicators with the public. We use an arcane vocabulary, uh, we uh, speak in abbreviations, and we are very poor communicators about the value of investment of society in basic research. But in fact, the tale has been told many times that investment in fundamental research will provide benefits to society and to individuals uh, that cannot be predicted at the outset. Uh, so we need to learn as a community to become better communicators about what value we add. We're viewed as, as being pompous, we're viewed as um, being elitist, and we're viewed as uh, wanting to suck public assets in order to follow our own hobby. And I think we need to counter that with effective communication. I agree that I think that this even some sort of more maybe formal uh, approaches to, to getting us scientists better prepared for communication is, is a very important aspect. But I think the great discoveries always defend themselves as uh, you have shown uh, in your studies. But what the future is bringing us? What is your next ambition or what is your future plan, which maybe is uh, somehow linked to uh, our uh, future uh, uh, outlook for inflammation uh, targeting. Right, so uh, we're very excited right now about uh, this observation of clonal hematopoiesis, where as we age, we accumulate in our peripheral blood clones of uh, myeloid cells that have arisen because of somatic acquired mutations in bone marrow stem cells. And uh, we have learned that uh, these mutations not only carry a risk of eventual malignancy to leukemia and myelodysplastic syndrome, but uh, cause a heavy burden of cardiovascular disease. And that opens up a huge new field for us to understand, new pathways and potentially new targets. So um, a large part of my laboratory is working on that now. So this is great to hear that uh, there is a lot uh, of new avenues in, in uh, understanding inflammation and immunity in uh, cardiovascular biology, and we are looking forward to these studies. Uh, in the end uh, of this interview, if you can briefly tell us about uh, your role in International Atherosclerosis Society, where do you plan to take this uh, society? It used to be viewed as a lipid society, to be frank, but uh, it was uh, very uh, uh, joyful for, uh, for the community that, uh, that it is being uh, sort of widened. Well, uh, I think one of the reasons that uh, leadership of the International Atherosclerosis Society has appealed to me is simply because we need to broaden the aperture that atherosclerosis is more than lipids. Uh, lipids are causal, LDL is causal in atherosclerosis, but even with excellent control of LDL, as we can achieve now uh, based on scientific advances, um, we have not cured atherosclerosis. So we need to broaden the perspective uh, to include cardiometabolic disease, um, beyond LDL triglycerides and triglyceride-rich lipoproteins, the diabetes and the metabolic syndrome elements are extremely important these days. And the other part is that in Western Europe and in North America, um, the scientific enterprise and the ability to apply it 
for the benefit of the public is pretty well advanced. Uh, but there are huge swaths of the world uh, where the, the greatest burden of cardiovascular risk exists today as we've uh, conquered many communicable diseases and people are surviving uh, to the age when they can develop atherosclerosis. So I think that reaching uh, Africa, uh, many parts of Latin America, and uh, Eastern Europe, uh, and, and Russia, uh, and of course uh, parts of Asia where the burden of metabolic disease as diets improve uh, and as smoking persists is enormous. Uh, so I think that the International Atherosclerosis Society has a mission uh, to provide a platform and a voice uh, for people who are not necessarily privileged uh, environments as we have in uh, biomedicine in Western Europe and in North America. It's really good to hear this. It also is important to note that these aims uh, in large extent are uh, in line with the aims of European Cardiac Society. So I suppose there is a lot of uh, space for future uh, cooperation. And I'm committed. Thank you very much, uh, Peter, and uh, uh, thank you very much for listening and uh, for uh, enlightening us about the future of inflammation in cardiology. Thank you.